Hey y'all, Billy from Purple Pastures Farm. All right, here we here we are back on Shark Week, preparing this week. Forgive the confusion. Anyway, we have basically a series of videos that we've been kind of planning, dealing more with preparedness, which is also overlaying with permaculture. And it's all gonna make sense here in a minute. Last time we talked about EDC or everyday carry. You definitely wanna go back and look at that video if you haven't seen it already. But today, we're gonna to be focusing on more of the cooking aspect of it. And if you're new to this, we, um, we it, and it's on me because honestly, I've reluctant, I've been reluctant to talk about any of this stuff at any great length because I didn't wanna be confused with a lot of the other Nimrods out there uh, that have made the transition from, you know, doing country living into what they think is apocalyptic predictions or whatever. I don't do that. We're always prepared. We live by the Boy Scout model. We live by the Sapper model. Ain't that right, Homestead, yeah, honey? That's right. And she actually, this shirt, this brand, is the reason Mom's flexing on everybody during these videos. <laughs> that protein brand. Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> anyway, well, mine is, look, Grumpy Acres. He's going to be out there. I'm going to see him pretty soon here at the Back to the Land Festival, along with his lovely wife, along with Hacks for the Homesteaders, along with Homestead for a Living. Looking forward to that. It's going to happen later this week. So... Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cook outside right here in this little device. It's called a sun oven. Now, before we get into that, we're gonna kind of, let's, let's kind of mosey on this way because she's getting blinded. Not too far, honey. Um, anyway, we have stuff in these pots and just about all of it came right here from the farm. I'm gonna take the top part. Why don't you tell them what you got down there? All right, in this pot, we have some potatoes with uh, butter on it and then rosemary also in here and we we grew the potatoes and the rosemary on the farm yeah pretty much everything but the salt and pepper and uh the butter so what do we got in there some we thyme got some pork roast with some onions in the bottom and we got some thyme on top yeah see all this now this pork roast what you see right here y'all here's the killer well, i'll just go ahead and leave that open let me just give this to you for a moment let me just talk about this and this is why as a butcher whenever i do my hams it's not really what you would think is a I call it a ham roast. We basically take all the muscle groups in that ham and instead of leaving it as one big ham, we break it down into muscle groups and basically make a ham roast out of it. You could take it and grind it. You can do any number of things, but it's for reasons like this where I like that more in the form of a roast because if I leave it that way, I can, like I said, I still got tons of options. So this is from the pig we just recently processed. You can go back and watch that video. It happened not a short while ago. So... Here's what we're gonna do, y'all. We got this handy dandy sun oven. Sun, I don't know why I can't say that properly. We got this sun oven. We're gonna talk about some of the aspects of it real quick before we put the grub in there. All right, y'all, this is this is the star of the show. Now, the, like I said before, the biggest reason I'm even covering this stuff is that there's so many people talking about the weird things that are unfolding right now. Is there gonna be an EMP? Well, I, that's why we team up with the EMP Shield. We sell those. Actually, we don't sell them. We, we have an affiliate code down below if you want that. But also, if it were to go off, you gotta ask yourself, how do I cook? You're gonna see me also cover in a couple of days something about light discipline, and it is of profound value. But that's why we come into something like this. The problem with having in a tactical environment, and believe me, if there were a grid down situation or anything like it, it is a tactical environment, despite what anybody tells you. You can't just go make it a fire wherever you want because everybody's gonna see the smoke. They're gonna smell the food. They're gonna see the flame. Well, you could easily take something like this, angle it in such a way to where it can't be seen, okay? Even though it has these reflectors in there that pretty much funnel all the stuff inside of there, from tactical, from a tactical standpoint, you could easily cook with this all year long. It doesn't matter. I mean, even right now, we just set it up and it's at near two, 250 degrees and it's been, you know, sun has been behind the clouds for a little while. Here's what's cool about this thing, y'all has these little sight glasses in here and you know whether or not this is one of the newer models so you can sit here and situate this thing in such a way you just kind of move the back legs to where the holes on this thing it reflects through one side and then through the hole there it tells you if it's lined up the more you have it lined up the hotter this thing's going to get in full sun okay so we got intermittent cloud cover and all that going on today but it's of no consequence because it's almost like a de facto crock pot the beauty about something like this is if you use the right pots, 
which, you know, that enamel wear or cast iron or something like that. The beauty about this thing is, is you're not going to burn the food. So you can kind of set it and forget it. And every once in a while, come back and change this thing. Okay. That is the beauty about it. Um, and like I said, I want to issue a certain apology out there, folks. There's a reason I didn't cover a lot of this stuff. And I said it before, but that's not going to be the case anymore. In these times, with all these weird things going on and things could happen at any time, I'm not going to shortchange everybody by not giving you the full extent of what we know around here because some Nimrod's over here doing videos about how they're the consummate expert on all this stuff. Um, we got over two decades of experience doing this as a family. So we know what we're talking about in a lot of ways, and there's things we still have yet to learn. So with that said, we're going to take Michelle's fantastic creation over there. And it's really this simple, y'all. We're going to open this thing up. It's probably better if you do it with gloves. But it's really this simple. It has these little latches right here that you can get a hold of. But it has this heat-proof glass. Now I'm just going to kind of... Let me go ahead and get a hold of this thing here. And it's stackable. They got these stackable pots now. And it has this little rack here. You can stick it in there. Here's a cool part. You stick this sucker in there, and no matter how you shift it, no matter how you shift this thing, it's in there cooking. Now, we're going to go ahead and latch this thing. It's really this simple. And it requires very little. So all you got to do, just latch that thing a little bit. It's already 225 degrees in this thing. Now, it's basically going to work like a crock pot. And as the, as the sun angles throughout the day, you can you don't even really have to attend to it all that much. It's kind of doing everything for you. So you can treat it like a crock pot. And right now it's about 1.30 in the afternoon. Okay, so we can just kind of leave this thing be, change it every once in a while, fix our sight glass. Don't need to stir it, don't need to do anything. It's just like a crock pot. So we're just gonna basically track the sun as this thing goes. And uh, we'll let you know how, we're gonna show you how awesome this turns out. She's always a fantastic cook anyway. And, um, we're going to show you how this works. Sorry about it. If you're hearing background noise, y'all, I don't know what's going on today. We have weird aircraft flying over here. And I don't know, for whatever reason, it just seems to be happening in great regularity around here. But has nothing to do with the video. We're going to wait. We're going to come back and we'll let you know how it goes down. All right, it's five o'clock and we put this thing in. I thought it was like 1.30, but it was actually about 1.00. We could just let this thing sit for a while. And right now it's sitting at right about 200 degrees. The sun has been in and out all day, but it's been, you know, from one o'clock to five. And take a look at it. A little fogged up in there, but it's all good. I got some, got some of these old pot holders. Hopefully these suckers ain't so old that I'm gonna wind up getting Kentucky. Well, it's got a little warmth there, but it doesn't feel so bad on the side. Let's just open it up here. All right. Smells like alcohol. Well, there's about two cups of red wine in it, so it should smell like alcohol. Yeah, yeah. that's a nostalgic feeling for me, Deb. Yeah, <laughs> it, really, with alcohol. it really is. Let's clarify. <laughs> yeah, one of the <laughs> one crazy story when back when he was in school in home ec, he was supposed to make risotto in class, and I sent him the. I sent him to school with a bottle of wine, <laughs> so that's a whole nother story. Maybe we'll talk about it in the podcast one of these days. So even with this open, it's about 200 degrees. And uh, I think it's ready to rock and roll. So, like I said, folks, don't think that just because you have a ham, this is why you want to learn some of these home butchery skills and why you want to check out some of my classes because you're going to find out that a lot of these cuts that haven't been traditionally used for things like this can be used for it. So, yeah, I'm hungry. So it's time to get this sucker up out of here. Are you happy now? Those She's been yapping about good. these doggone potatoes forever in a day. Okay, so it's about 200 degrees in there. I'm just going to show you real quick how easy this thing is to break down. You just shut the just shut the door on it, and you have this little latch here. You can kind of move it around there. This is as cool as can be, y'all. And these just fold in. Check this out. It's like something straight out of NASA, but actually it works. Okay, so we're going to roll this thing. It's got this little thing back here. We'll just push it in. And then latch it. And then look at that. Bam, dinner served, y'all. 
Are the blueprints going to disappear mysteriously after 50 years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these aren't exactly mylar sails and stuff. But hey, y'all, here's from a preparedness standpoint, I can't help but point this out. It's very light. It's a little bulky, but what do you expect? But think about this in preparedness circumstances. As I discussed before, you don't have to worry about smoke going up so everybody sees it. The smell, yeah, I mean, that's always going to be an issue. But you can always, because we are situated in the mountains, I can always situate this thing to where the reflective parts of it are always camouflaged. So that is one massive advantage of using something like this in a tactical environment. Are there times you're going to have to use wood fire? Yeah. But we're going to talk about tactical ways of doing that in the future. All right, let's get this sucker inside and see how it tastes. All right, the moment of truth. Okay, we'll go ahead and separate this from this. That looks fantastic. Well, I'll try to get this over here somehow or another. I know Michelle got this rosemary from right outside the door. So, hey y'all, going right back to zones. Put your, um, put your herb garden where it's gonna be needed, okay? Remember, remember those permaculture zones. Aha. This here was actually on all fours not long ago. We'll just remove that time. I'll just stick it over here with this guy. And in order to get the lid on this pot, we had to basically carve off the top of it. So, and then turn it upside down. There's some carrots. There we go. And this thing's still a little bit hot. So I'm just gonna take off a little bit just to try to see what time it is. Uh-oh, gotta get a hold of it. Look at that. If you didn't know it any better, it almost looks like roast beef. Remember, there's a reason that pork in the store you buy is white. It's because it's anemic. It ain't supposed to be that way. Okay. So we'll just start off with something like this. Let's just see how it tastes. Oops. Use some salt. So let's try the meat because that's really what I want to eat the most of anyway. All right, if I got only thing, one bad thing to say about all this is um, nothing. Everything's just right on the money. Plus Michelle's over there and I ain't about to say nothing right there in front of her. No, it's fantastic, honey. It really is, let's try these taters. All American meal right there. I mean, I no complaints at all. So if you need one of these, y'all, I'm telling you, there's a ton of different recipes you can put in this thing. You don't even have to use these pots. You can use some of your own. But if you need one, you want one, just look down below. We got a link for it. Check it out. All right, with that said, y'all, rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, it's time for me to sit down and grub. We'll see you next time.